So I just left camp and I'm gonna hike up on this ridge line where I was shooting last night and get a look at the area or the other mountain range that I'm hiking into today. And from there, I should be able to get a good idea of what the weather is gonna be like over there. When I looked earlier, it was still clouded in. So it might be interesting to uh, hike through that area. I'm not sure if it's raining or what's going on, but we'll see. Let's take a look. See clouds rolling through right now, right through there. So it looks like it'll be perfect day for hiking over there. Can see more than I've been able to see this whole trip. So I'm gonna scramble back down along this ridge line, down along the lake, and head down that way. I'm almost up to the top of the next pass and it is super windy up here. Look back there, you can see where I came from. That little pass right through there behind the glacier. And then where I camped at for the last few nights was up along the ridge line. Drop down below that gap a little bit. But right now, headed to the top here. See right back there, there's that slope. I'm gonna cut up that slope, then underneath that peak right there, and then across out of view. And there's a really nice saddle up there. You can see where the snow is. I'd like to camp up there. But anytime I'm gonna head off trail in the mountains, I'm usually looking for places that I don't find much information on online, because that means there'll be some really cool photography opportunities and backpacking, and there won't be anybody else out there. So I use First off, topographic map online, and I use what is called slope angle shading. So you can see how gradual the slope is from shallow to steep. And if you're doing an off trail route, that can help you to plan which slope to go up when you're ascending an area without a trail on it. The other thing I always look at, if I can once I get here, is I'll look for water sources. So you can see where I cross this gully right here, there's a high snow field. So that means there'll probably be some water draining down into that area. So I don't have to carry water all the way up with me. It also looks like on that ridge line, there's some snow. So there should be some melting streams down through there. And just knowing that can save you like eight pounds in weight because if you want to camp up on a ridge line and you don't know if there's water up there, you probably have to carry a gallon of water for the next 24 hours. And there's where the off trail starts. So I'm going to cut right up through the forest there where it connects to that rib and follow that rib up to that pass. I found some game trails here and there that have been helpful to find, but otherwise just looking for the shallowest slope and heading there. I'd say it'd take me about another two or three hours of this and I'll be up out of here. Should have some good views up there. So I'm just coming up over the pass right now and the view is pretty good in all directions. Swing this around. There are the lakes. And my route that I'm trying to do, I'll camp either up here in the ridge line for a night or down there. And then I'll hike up through here off trail. And all this is just protected wilderness. So there's no trails, nothing back here, but lots of mountains. And then I'm gonna try to get up on that little knoll right there. And the rest of my route will continue back around those mountains way back over there, but it'll be on the other side of that ridge line. Now you can get a pretty good look at where I came from back on that pass right there. So I'm gonna figure out 
what the game plan is. I don't know if I'm gonna stay up here. It is only 11 in the morning. I got up there a lot faster than I actually thought I would. So I have to sit down and have a snack, have a coffee and figure things out. So I decided to stay up on the ridge line tonight and maybe tomorrow night. But of course, once I get over here, the clouds completely dissipate. This area behind me was where all those clouds were rolling over on the first night when I was out shooting. And that's the peak that was enshrouded in clouds. So it would have been ideal. And the original weather report had that conditions going on all week and now it's changed. So. When I'm up in the Pacific Northwest doing any trips, it seems like the weather will change every three days on the forecast. So even if you see something out there like a week, a lot of times it's only two or three days and it's completely different because it's so hard to predict the weather up here. But got a pretty nice camp. You can see where I came from way down in there. And here's the pass that I came up earlier today. And here's camp. Got a spot that's a little bit protected from the wind in case it gets too crazy tonight, but still have a nice view of that peak right there from inside of my tent. So it should be an ideal spot to have for just waking up and shooting sunrise and watching all the alpine glow tonight on all the peaks. So we'll see how the, uh, the clouds turn out but I'm gonna shoot no matter what, because it's a pretty cool spot. So it's about 20 minutes till sunset right now, and as you can see, it's beautiful in all directions, but pretty clear. Not much good light happening tonight. But I think I have one composition that might give me a result that I like. We'll see. I'm going to crop right down in there. The composition I really wanted to shoot was this larch tree being right on the left hand frame and then the leading lines of this lake going right back into that peak. But without clouds, I don't know how much is really going to happen there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot this composition zoomed in back over that horizon first. And then once the sun drops, hopefully I'll get some nice alpine glow and some twilight color back on these peaks. The only downside of that is that you can't really see the nice turquoise blue color of these lakes because there's no light on them. And even when sun rises in the morning from over this way, when the light's hitting the peak with all the color, you still won't be able to see those lakes. So it looks like during sunrise or sunset, you'll never see turquoise lakes in a picture from here unless somebody photoshopped it so here's the composition I have and I'm gonna use the bottom here to kind of frame and brace the very bottom of the composition in dark and then the back will just have all the light flooding through like that and these peaks will just be lit up in yellow and orange so for this shot, I'm just gonna focus right there on that ridge line, that high contrast ridge right there when it goes from dark to light. Zoom in on that. Get my back button focus point. Looks good, I'm gonna shoot F11 here. And I'm gonna expose all the way to the right. Since it's yellow or orange, I'm gonna dial back two thirds of a stop as always. I could probably even go full stop. Fire that one off. Check the focus. 
Looks solid. I like all those layers going on back there. I think I'll re really be able to bring out the vivid orange yellow color up there. Man, but I was just hoping for a real banger of a sunset or sunrise. Maybe I'll get lucky tomorrow morning. But when I was back there originally on my trip and I saw just clouds moving through here constantly and just sitting up over this area, I was so excited because I was thinking that I was going to be up here in like cloud cover and fog and then the sunlight would just break through and make some really hazy and atmospheric conditions. So I'm going to check the red histogram. It's pushed up to the right, so controlling all that. So let's take a look at the images that I've been working on from this trip and some of the other images that I took in this area on earlier trips. So here's the shot that I just got done taking and I've started to edit this one. I'm not completely done. I have a little bit of color work to do up here. I don't really like how this is overly saturated where the snow is. So I need to do something to break that color up. But so far, I think I have the lighting correct for this one. And it ended up working out pretty well for having non-ideal shooting conditions. So I think this one will be decent once I'm done with it, although it's not one of my favorites. So here is an image that I captured two mountain ranges north of the one that I'm currently in in this video. And I had my tent set up here and we were shooting this place for about three days as the weather moved through. And I really like how all the clouds came through and separated this foreground. And then it just drops off this straight cliff down into a river valley and these massive peaks set back behind it. So I think I'm pretty much at the final edit for this image and I really like how it turned out. So here's another shot that I captured later in the evening from the trip that I'm currently on. And this is directly behind me in the opposite direction. But this mountain ended up catching some really nice alpine glow and late evening light. So I'm not quite finished editing this one yet. I think I might darken up the bottom here a little bit. I feel like this area is pretty boring down in here. And if I darken this up, it'll help the eyes move up into the central part of the image. Once again, not great light, so not one of my favorite images, but still worth the 10 minutes that it took me to process it. So I have some memories from the trip. So here's another image that I took while out in Utah on a backpacking trip. And this area is just awesome because it's like the mixture of the Southwest desert landscape with canyons and plateaus, but it's mixed with the mountains. So you get lots of snow, you get lots of really crazy looking weather coming through because it gets caught from the ocean and the desert up on these massive mountain ranges. So I had a lot of fun out shooting this one. And for this one, I'm not quite done yet. I'm trying to figure out how I can get this to be the center of attention, show the foreground, but have the eyes move immediately from the foreground up into the center of the photo. Right now, I feel like the foreground area right down in here is a little bit too light and it's kind of distracting me. So that's a puzzle that I'll have to figure out before I finish the editing of this one. So here's one last one that I'm still in the middle of working on as well. And this was taken over in the Rocky Mountains. And I'm not quite sure what I think about it. I was trying to work with the magentas and the greens as a nice combination of complementary colors. But as you can see, the light just isn't fantastic here. I was backpacking out through this area for 10 days and I had my tent set up here one night and I didn't think anything was gonna come of the sunset. And then the horizon opened up and it was okay light, not fantastic, but I figured I would shoot it anyway and this is what came out of it. So if I can get the colors to work right here, I think I'm gonna end up darkening some of the sky across the whole top here and then darkening some of this foreground as well and maybe lightening up some of the center. And that'll kind of help the eyes move to the center of the photo Right now, I feel like it's kind of hard to know where your eyes should start because there's a lot of detail everywhere and the light across the whole image is fairly even. So it doesn't really have that central point or location that sucks your eyes into it. So once again, another problem I'm going to have to solve if I'm going to finish this one and put it in my portfolio. But let's jump back to the shooting technique. So as you can see behind me, there's absolutely no color in the sky. So I've been turned around this way and working on some compositions 
right in here. The sky's starting to get a little bit color. Nothing spectacular, but since I'm up here, I might as well take it. These trees down here are getting hit with some of this glow as the sun drops over the horizon. So they have like a deep green with like an orangish yellow on the tips, which looks pretty cool. And those peaks are getting touched with light, just barely. So another pretty simple shot here, just one exposure required. And I've just been focusing right down on those trees in the foreground. I'll show you right here. There's my focus point, and I'm gonna shoot at F11, and I'll go up to ISO 250, just so I don't have to wait for that longer shutter speed. And because the wind's kicking a little bit. I feel like the more the wind blows down here, the more out of focus those trees will be. I think that is it for sunset tonight. So I will get up probably at five, take a peek out of my tent in the morning and see if the light's worth shooting. But overall, really good day out here. I woke up and it was one of those days where I kind of had that feeling in my stomach like, ah, off trail. I don't know what's ahead of me. Is it going to get sketchy? Is it going to be dangerous? And it was completely fine. But it's always that stuff in the back of your head that's just like spinning in the morning before the unknown. At least for me, when I come out here and I'm on solo trips, it's like the level of intensity just escalates. And then you make it off trail where you're not really sure where you're going. You have to make up your route on the fly and just gauge game trails, gauge the best routes up to get to the location and it always seems to work out so far so good so maybe all that worry was for absolutely nothing but sure is good to be up here what a spot all right time to turn the camera off and get some rest night guys thanks for watching